You should not focus on the, uh, anything that is going on. Let's not be distracted whatsoever. First of all, I want to say thank you for the organizers of this program. Thank you for organizing this program. Especially, uh, especially greetings to uh, Prophetess Ima Kenneth. God bless you for having us to be a part of this program. May the Lord continue to increase the anointing upon your head in Jesus' name. I bring you greetings from my partner in Christ, my husband. I want to say thank you, sir, for the ascension. Thank you so much for releasing me. I'm not there in my older home. He has prayed for me. He has believed God with me and he has sent me here. I want to say thank you, sir, for not letting this place of God waste me. Thank you, sir. And um, I want to say a very big thank you to every one of us that have made that time to be here today. As I was preparing for this program, as I was about to set, set out, it started raining. I said to the rain, go oh, back around now, I will be there. If you like rain fire, I will, I will be here. So I want to say thank you to everyone that is here. Please appreciate yourself. Thank you so much for that go shot, that's how I go shot. I am Mrs. Sogo Afonke, so I will come with you. Our chief organizer was supposed to say a little bit of me, but maybe she will come up later and say a little bit more. But I want to just say that I am an encourager, an inspirer, an encourager, but I am not a preacher. So I'm going to stand in my office and do what God has, you know, communicated to me to do. I'm going to speak from my heart to communicate to everyone what God has laid in my heart to do. And I will ask that to pay attention and I know of the truth that God is here and is going to meet us all at the point of our need in the mind of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit reminded me again. He said, for that person crying and saying that, God, wait for my own time. Oh, I don't know what you are believing, God, but I don't know what crying in the Spirit. The Lord will ask me to tell you that the time has come. And He's visiting you right now with the mighty name of King. I want you to trust God. He's the God of all things, and He knows. How to do what he will do. So today, we're going to be talking about achieving success through the help of the Holy Spirit. Achieving success through the help of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to take our test from Joshua 1 8. It's very old. Joshua chapter 1. If you are there, let me know. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. That's where we're going to be taking our course. Thank you. Are we in Joshua? One person. Yes. Okay. Yes, there. Yes, there. Yes. Nice. 
success and there is good success. There is success and there is good success. I will not come here to define what success means. You know why? What success means to you is different from what success means to me. So, success does not have a definite definition. It does not have a universal definition, no. But I know what good success is. And I'm going to define how God has simply placed it in my heart. He said, good success is the fulfillment in Christ. Success is the fulfillment in Christ. Okay. And I said, God, what are you saying? To let me let you know that no man achieves anything in life without God. Say it again. If you can write, write. But make sure you're not distracted. This is a very serious business. See, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not for a reason. The Lord has given the vision here of this program, this team, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The authority of the Holy Spirit is not for a race. It's to achieve something. It's to achieve greatness. Because that is what God's heart is. So, He asked me to tell you that no man achieves anything in life without the help of God. No matter who you are, no matter what you do, you need God. Everything rises and falls back to God. Greatness can only be achieved truly with the help of God. So, that is it. Now, there, is a, there is a way in the kingdom of God to achieve good success. And what I'm talking to you about is not motivation, it's not anything. It's what I have, what has, I have what, what he has worked with me through this process. I've tested it for the fact. And uh, what you don't do, what you pass, I'm going to be using your man in Twitter, but I will type as well as possible to be translated. What do you do? Oh, okay. Well, uh, so, if you are sure of something, you can post of it. I can Because I know this is what is for real. I bless God for where I am coming from. I am a, a woman that God has helped. I'm a child of grace. I'm a child coming out from the dark side of the desert. God, by His infinite, infinite mercy, showed me mercy and brought me from the dark side of the desert, bringing me to the dark light. And I give Him all the glory forever. So, what I'm going to be communicating with you is the thing that God has, you know, has created for the hand. Now, the preamble to achieving success in life is to be a son. The preamble to achieving success in life in the kingdom of God is to be a son. When you search through the scripture, you will notice that. God did not at any point in time entrusted anything big to a small boy or into a child. A child can be a 40, a 40 year old boy. A, a 40 year old boy. So God does not even understand age, no. But he understands sonship and he understands the child. I sat through the scripture in my own little way. I saw that there is no way. And God entrusted me be into a child's hands. And there was no way he really communicated big things to a child. You know why? The God is not a God is not a waster. He does not waste his time. He does not waste his resources. He does not waste his information. The Bible says, as a child, you behave like a child. So why, why would God waste his time to communicate some other things with a child? Why do you know that? He will make use of it because it's a child. So the preamble to achieving greatness is 
first of all to be a son. You know the reason why? You're going to know the first thing. Like I said, they are pouring on the Holy Spirit not for a waste. There is some certain level of information that will not be entrusted into your hands when you are a child. My father, the first two decades of my life, he never communicated anything deep with me. But I noticed that the type of communication and the type of thing we talk about now are they are deep things. And the only thing said, because he knows that I have a level of authority to handle those information. He knows that I will not waste those information. That is who God is. When he wants to communicate, he uses the words. The Bible says in Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Can we go there? Romans 8, 14. Because of Titus 3, we said, for as much as and led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I'm reading from KJV. We can go see later, Romans 8, verse 14. So it's important that you are a son so that you can communicate some certain things to you. My son was about seven years old during the week. No matter how much I love him, I can never give him a car key or a car. Why? Because he can destroy you. That is who God cannot hand over to you. What can destroy you? He's not a waster. So I told him, I blessed him that day, and I wished him out, and I wished him happy. And we moved on. So God is calling his children today that you have to grow up. Have to grow up from being a child to be a son so that he can be able to communicate some certain things to you. Very, very important. Now, those are the ways that the Holy Spirit has led me so far, and he, he will have me to uh, communicate to you. I go there to In Jeremiah 33, verse 33, when you are a son, woman, you will be. You will have confidence. You know why? Because the Lord said, Call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which that men know. Call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which that men know. That is what when we keep the word, we follow through the word. Hallelujah. Are we together? He follows through the world. He follows through the world. He does not automatically in that they are running. So quickly, I'm going to run through five things or five ways that the Holy Spirit has helped me to achieve success. I'm still in the journey of success because you see, success is not a destination, it is a journey. Success is not a destination, it is a journey. So, I will, uh, you know, communicate with you the five ways at which God uh, leads to achieve success. The first one is by instruction. Instruction and obedience. Instruction and obedience. You see, if you look at Joshua 1 verse 8, Every promise of God comes with commandment and instruction. If you check through the Bible, you will see that there is no, there is no singular promise that is not without an instruction or a commandment. Before he brings his promise to pass, he always gives an instruction and a commandment. So it is when you obey commandment that you obey this instruction that begins to bring you things to pass. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Get to go to the house. I remember, excuse me, about five years ago, I ran an online TV called Blossom International TV. I am a certified. A certified public relations officer. 
because I have a lot of things I do. Now, over the years, about 20 years, 22 years ago, God gave me a dream. And I wrote it down in my comment and I've forgotten about it. He told me that when the time of life comes, he would, you know, bring to my what to do to make the dreams to pass. He said, whatever you become in life, you are going to be an inspirer, a global inspirer, someone that will go out there and inspire greatness. And I said, God, my life does not even look greatness. It doesn't even look anything like greatness at that time. He said, that is not for you to decide. It's for me to decide. So when the time of life came, 2016 December, God began to speak to me that it's time to go into the full of time that I have given. Look, I'm telling this story for a, for a reason. We're talking about instruction and obedience. See, a man that cannot receive instruction, a man that cannot receive instruction, cannot go for in life. Let God get his business. Oh, the Lord Jesus. If you start through the scripture, there is always something that God will ask you to do before he gets something done. There is always a promise, and there is always a commandment, an instruction before a promise. And it is when you take charge and you obey that instruction, that is when the promise comes to pass. So I was saying the story, I was making money. That I said, what success means to me is very from what it means to you. I was making money, but I was dissatisfied. Why? Because destiny was about to break. Something was about to give way. Something was about to break forth. When you are in labor with destiny, you will, you will, God will do everything He can to make you lose your peace. Just to get your attention. I was making money. I was fat. I was having a lot of uh, good things at that season. But for some one reason or the other, I was so happy. And I was wondering, why am I not happy? The Lord spoke to me in one revelation one night and he said, Daughter, it's time to, be, to go into what I've called you to do. Go out there. People need you. It's a hurting world we have out there. You have to go out there as an encourager to encourage my children to be a shoulder for them to lean on, to help them, fire them to greatness. People are going through mental health issues. They are going through a whole lot. I need you to go out there. And he did not stop there. He said they are going to go into media. What do you know me with the media? <laughs> we don't even have anything to media. Channel television media. God, how am I going to get this one? You know what I mean? I did not answer it no. Praise the Lord. I didn't answer God. I was saying my own thing because I was making money. Okay. One of the things I do is I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm an I sell items that, you know, God has been blessing us. In a week, I don't think I had, I sell less than 50,000 euro a week as gain, not even gain you. But you know what God is? Hey, okay, you don't want to understand me, okay? No problem. That thing that is making you get distracted, I will seize it. Pregnant for six months, <laughs> I did not say one thing. You don't understand. I said good clothes. People rush my clothes. I want to rush and close me. They stop calling me. When I call them, they don't pick my call. For no reason whatsoever. I knew that there was something wrong. So I want you to pay attention. If God is asking you to do something, I don't do it. Then you know, you know. Because if you don't obey that instruction, you don't obey that commandment, the promise of God upon your life will not be. So six months went by, I did not. I did not uh, answer. But when the time came after six months, I knew that ah, I have to get this thing done. And somehow, I said, I went to see some of my fathers in the faith. Went to see my father in the Lord. Before you know it, I started everything, uh, things together. And then God started. And let me tell you something. The big 
being his honest job. The fact that God is calling you to something does not mean that it's going to be smooth, though. You can read somewhere in your life and say, Though you go through hell, you go through fire, it will not burn you. You go through waters, it will not overshadow you. He did not promise you that hey, the enemy will not rise up like a flood, but he said, No, he's going to raise the standard against them. That is God for you. So I began to do what he asked me to do. I'll pause from there, I'll come back to that later. The next way God and the Holy Spirit helps you achieve greatness in life is through worship and prayer. Worship and prayer. In fact, that is the richest place in the world, as far as I am concerned. Because this is where you receive deep insight from God. This is where you receive great things from God. This is where He will show you great and mighty things which that moment wants. This is where He will give you deep uh, treasures of darkness. At your secret place, where you are worshiping Him, especially worship. It's not where you are in Jamboree making noise everywhere. No. God honors people that make time for him. That's when he speaks to you the most. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So true worship, true prayer, when you are trying the presence of God, you will receive. There is no doubt. You will receive from God. What do you receive? The greatness you receive is not literally material things. No. Idea. That's. Idea is what you receive from God. What you receive in the place of worship and the place of prayer. The next thing that God uses to achieve every day, the next uh, point is service. Please let's pay attention. Service. Service unto God and service unto men. This one has a A, B, C. Service in the place of your worship, service in your, you know, your church. Or your congregation, you must be doing something for God. God honors still worship. God Almighty, He honors still worship. So, make up your mind to serve God. Is in that service unto God is one of the things that will help you to achieve greatness in life. And service unto men. An example is Elijah and Elisha. Sincerely, Elisha was not a great man. He was just a farmer. I don't want to spend time for us to be reading the scripture for so long because of, you know, you know, but Elisha is, uh, he was not a farmer. He was not a farmer at all. He was just, he was a farmer rather. He was not a great man at all. He just said that I'm going to serve Elijah. And that was how he began to, you know, serve Elijah. And he became great in life. The next one is mentorship. Learning something from a mentor. You see, whatever you're going to become in life, somebody has gone ahead of you to learn it. Somebody. Somebody knows ahead. So you need to put yourself to become great enough to learn. Now, the next one is preparation. See, I'm going to dwell here for, so, uh, for you to have. I'm going to dwell here a little while because this is the main place that God told me to hammer on when I come. Sorry. Praise the Lord. So, preparation. Our generation do not like this particular aspect. We live in a generation where they want things done fast, fast, very quick generation. Sharp, sharp, and say, oh, maybe they do. You know that kind of thing. Hey, hey, that's not really like that. But God is a God of principles and systems. It's very important for you to know that if you don't stay in the place of preparation, you will go by your life. Let me tell you something. Everything, everything you want in life is that, that everything that you are running after is running after you. I don't know. Praise the Lord. Everything that you want, that you are trusting God for, is running after 
the, the level you have. There's a principle in God that if you don't go into that level where God wants you to go into, He does not entrust certain things into your hands. Most times, God requires us to grow, to grow through the process of preparation. Take the life of Joseph, Elijah, Abraham, even our fathers of faith. Today, we we we, we reference that they are born. That you are able, that you will be every one of them. Have you seen the time you bend your story? They will tell you what they go through. They will tell you what they get in the in the place of preparation. Please, if you don't take anything serious, not the one I'm talking about today. Take, please, let me be a tell you this one. The season of preparation determines the heart. Get to your life and the sustainability of that greatness. I come again. The way you, the depth of which you prepare determines your height and the sustainability of that greatness. Anything worth doing well, anything worth doing at all is worth doing well. If you want greatness, then you must be willing to pay the price. And this is the since this is the place you pay the price for greatness. The depth of operation determines the height of greatness and the sustainability of that greatness. I want to pay you kindly take note of this. To be honest, success and greatness, they don't come easy. They come. They try to price of greatness. Even salvation is not free. Jesus paid the price. Somebody was paying one price at some point or the other. And the, 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 the place you have to pay this price is the place of sitting down, counting the parts of what you have called you to do. What has God called you to do in life? You want to, you want to be a great man of God? You want to be captains of industries? You want to be a great of God, then you must learn the ropes. You must sit down in the place of preparation. Let me, if you go my dad, yeah, I could It's a serious business. See, everything you are looking for is good for you. But it's not only for this version of you. It's not only for this version of you. It's looking for the version of what you can handle what is coming. For example, Okay, what's the What's the Have you been able to handle one before? You understand? It's, you must be able, God was finding the faith. God was finding the faith. Now, quickly, really, under the season of preparation, there are three things you must discover. One, discovering God. You must discover God. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning was God. The first thing that was made reference to in the Bible was God. Jeremiah yeah. 9 for the first thing to say, how to discover God? Was there in a new way? Why? To sustain the greatness you are tiring is this God. So you must desire, you must discover God. The second thing you have to discover is yourself. And why you say that? You know why you have to discover God? That greatness you want, that success you want, you want to each other, you want to manage each other, it is not that God's wealth, it is not that he is something. So, we need to discover God. You just have to let instructions in the house and let's concentrate, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The second thing you have to discover is something who you are in Christ Jesus. Hello, sir. I want to give you an analogy. Is everybody in the You have to discover who you are in when you don't know who you are, you settle for anything in life. When 
you do not know who you are, you will search for anything in life. And I think it was, 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 you said that, you know, playing with the chickens on the floor for so many years. But the day he even discovered, the day he even discovered who the evil is, he flew and never came back. When you know who you are, you will not search for anything else in life. I want to give you this example. He said, Mr. Bajo, you know what? 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 Now, he knows himself to be the son of Elijah. And he said, Mr. Bajo, you know what? But the day somebody has come, this has come.
we made pay for him. This is the only place that God sent such a thing. He did not say your daddy will make pay for you. Your mommy will make pay. No! Your gift will bring you in front of kings and not ordinary men. Your, your gift will bring you in front of kings and not ordinary men. So it's very important that you pay attention to your gifts. Very, very, very important. Because it's when you are paying attention to your gifting and your talent that you will begin to maximize it. And it is when you are maximizing this gift that it brings you to your greatness in life. The last thing I'm going to be discussing in this um, in the ways that God um, helps you achieve greatness is true seeing. God is incapacitated when you do not see the right thing. No matter how God has anointed you, no matter how, how much He has given you so much gift, if you don't see yourself in the future He's taking you to, you cannot achieve it. What you don't see, you don't achieve. What you don't see, you don't achieve. The future, uh, the future you don't picture. You don't picture it. I say it again. The future, you don't picture. You don't feature it. And that's why the guy who said something. He said, always picture yourself in the scripture. Always picture yourself in the scripture. Find whatever God is telling you to do, whatever greatness that God has for you, this is the scripture. My own is in Isaiah. I, I don't want to go into that deep story now. So it's very important that you begin to see yourself. Now, and he taught me not literally, he taught me presenting. 
mental. But because I knew, I have an idea of where God is taking me to, I did not stay there. And that is where I went back to my place of preparation. And I got skilled. I got skilled. I went to them presenting, you know, professionally. And I thank God that from that little corner, God is taking me to the world today, to the glory of His holy name. Today, I have partnership with about six media in Nigeria to the glory of God. Now, I just want to encourage some of you about the ministry of my second. From nowhere, God blows on me into my credit and still doing that. I just want to encourage someone here today. What is it you are believing God for? What is that thing that you, you just know that ah, you cannot achieve that God, uh, that help of God? He said to help you today. The authority of the Holy Spirit is available in us. And that is why I want us to rise up and we drive down. And let's sing this song. And we will arise and fulfill my destiny. I will arise and accomplish the will of God.